It was 1st December 2014. The newly anointed Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, inaugurated the Hornbill Festival in Kisama. There was Bonhomi, warmth, expectation and smiles all around. The topmost elected executive representative of people of India, hailing from the westernmost part of the country, arrived amid much fanfare and promise to the remote northeastern part of India in Nagaland. A new era of united dream of development and growth for India was celebrated in 2014 Hornbill Festival. Seven years later, the Chief Minister of Nagaland, now an ally of Prime Minister Modi's Saffron Party, called off the biggest extravaganza of the Seven Sisters on the seventh day of the 10 day festival. Hornbill Festival is the celebration of Naga culture and tradition. Nagas are angry in December 2021. The bonhomi and welcoming smile of 2014 is now a forgotten past. on 4th December 2021 afternoon, a group of soldiers from the 21 Para Regiment were waiting to carry out an ambush on what they thought was a group of Naga militants near Oting village in Moon district of Nagaland. They opened fire at the pickup truck from automatic weapons, reportedly expecting to have caught men belonging to a faction of the insurgent organization, the National Socialist Council of Nagaland. It was only after they approached the vehicle that they realized six of the men had died on the spot and two were severely wounded. All were unarmed locals. Villagers from nearby areas heard the gunfire and went to investigate. We are here at Moon district where that horrible incident took place. Civilian firing over a botched up operation. And you can see the situation over here. People are out on the streets, the locals protesting. Tempers flew and a fight broke out between the soldiers and the villagers. It is normal for villagers in these areas to carry machetes. The fight resulted in injuries to six of the Special Forces men and the death of one who was cut down with a machete. Three SUVs in which the soldiers were travelling were burnt down by the angry mob. The soldiers were forced to fight their way out of the melee and fired on the mob, killing seven more people. Keep Wang Konyak, among the first to reach the spot, was where six civilians were killed after being mistaken for insurgents. He admits that the mob set the army vehicle on fire after the killings. He claims some in the forces were trying to flee with bodies. Look a pickup car, pickup truck. Well, after seeing that vehicle, another vehicle was going to the other direction. Dusi direction me jara tha wo dusi gari. और हम लोग उस वो भागने के लिए कोशिश कर रहा था वहां में डेड बॉडी था लेकिन हम लोग को नहीं पता था वहां में डेड बॉडी था मोन द मेन सिटी ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट इज मोर देन 5 एंड 1/2 आवर ड्राइव अवे फ्रॉम ओटिंग 
Overnight, the words spread like fire and Nagaland was bursting with anger. There were protests all across the state. Assam Rifles issued a statement and regretted the aftermath of the operation, which it said was aimed at tracking insurgents. Tizit police officer in charge was the one who took the FIR of the 4 December evening massacre. There are at least 35 different Naga tribes in India and Myanmar, each with their own language and their own traditional area of habitation. These incidents took place in Mon district of Nagaland, which is the stronghold of the Konyak Naga tribe. But it united the entire Northeast in protest to rise up against the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. This debate has been on for the last 63 years. If you remember the genesis of this act, when it was brought to the Rajya Sabha in August 1958, There were marathon debates and it went on for days together in that Munson session. And we have had many far-sighted prominent leaders of those days, starting from Rajasthan to Uttar Pradesh and uh, Odisha and uh, Andhra Pradesh, right from the north to the south of India. Mm. who have vehemently opposed the enactment of this Armed Forces Special Powers Act. The incident was very, very unfortunate. And therefore, I had been to Mon to attend the funeral. We took a decision asking Government of India to repeal the Armed Forces Special Power Act in the state of Nagaland, not only in Nagaland, but northeast. The sleepy hilly village of Oting was in national headlines. There were protest marches, barricades across all seven states of the northeast. An angry mob of around 500 vandalized a Sam rifles camp in Moon district and the office of the Cognac Union on 5th December. On 6 December, as the funerals of victims of the 4th December were carried out in Nagaland, ruckus erupted in Indian Parliament. The opposition demanded an explanation from the government. The Home Minister of India briefed the Parliament that the forces had fired to disperse a mob. The local police were probing the killings and the situation was tense but under control. Shah also said, that over 250 people attacked a Sam Rifles camp and an FIR had been registered. Apni suraksha me tatha bhid ko titar bitar karne ke liye suraksha balo ko goli chalani padi, jisse saat aur nagri ko ki mruti ho gayi tatha kuch anya gael ho gayi. Staniya prasasan aur police ne sthiti ko samanya karne ke prayas kiye hain. Nagaland government announced an ex-gratia of 5 lakh rupees each to the families of victims of the incident. Section 144 was imposed in Mon district and mobile internet was suspended. Langtun was in the search party that went looking for the coal wagers who were killed in the initial firing by forces. He too died after soldiers opened fire for the second time after murderous attack by the mob. His family seeks help for his wife and two-month-old kid Langton left behind. हम ये मांग करना चाहता कि ये मेरा भाई है, भाई का एक पिति है ये इसका दो महीना का है। आप ये दोनों को पालने के लिए ग्रामीण तरफ से क्या आप लोग दे सकते मदद करने से अच्छा है यहाँ से इंटर में यहाँ रहा है पब्लिक के ऊपर आलम वो लोग हाजिरा करने के लिए गए थे तो इंडियन आर्मी आके क्यों मारा किस किसकी वजह से मारा 
Monglong, the widow of another victim, Hokup, says they had gotten married on 25th of November and didn't even have time to celebrate. She trusts the Indian government to do justice. The scars are deep. The anger is palpable. The mistake in Mon promises to be costlier than the authorities perceived. When India became independent, Nagaland was a part of Assam. A nationalistic movement to unite Nagas turned the region into a firebed in the next decade. The government of India separated the Naga Hills from Assam and added Twin Sang Frontier to it to form the Union Territory of Naga Hills Twin Sang area created with a large degree of autonomy. But the tribes were still not happy. Violent agitation across the region forced a compromise and Nagaland became a full-fledged state of the Union of India on 1st December 1963. There are many different tribes of Nagas as per the 2011 census figures. The total population of the state is nearly 20 lakh. This growing population has been fighting for self-determination for more than a century now. Post-independence Indian government struggled to iron out the differences. Framework agreement of Naga Peace Accord is still being worked out. Prime Minister Narendra Modi honoured the legendary Naga freedom fighter and leader of religious movement Rani Gaidin Liu in a recent event in August to celebrate her birth centenary. There has been clear instruction from the Prime Minister's office to all his ministers to visit Northeast at least twice every year and take up issues related to their ministries. But all these efforts came to a knot with 4th December firing of innocent locals by the armed forces. It has once again raised the debate of the misuse of AFSPA in the Northeast. Ever since the funeral ceremony took place in uh, uh, Mohan district Halipet ground and uh, while I have been following this convoy, I've seen that every particular person who's coming out on the streets, they are holding placards which read uh, repeal uh, AFSPA, it's a draconian law and it's uh, somewhere down the line uh, what was also reiterated by the Nagaland chief minister. He while addressing that funeral ceremony said that uh, AFSPA was brought in due to insurgency, then what is the use of it now? Why can't it be repealed? So what we do see in Northeast after this uh, incident is a trigger of uh, the demand of uh, the withdrawal of the AFSPA and that's not just uh, the demand here from Nagaland. We also saw the Meghalaya uh, 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 Chief Minister also send out a similar message. So definitely this is a more or less unanimous clamor of the, clamor of the Northeast and not just Nagaland that we could very well say. Why was it necessary to fire without taking normal interrogative action. Now, Congress Party Manifesto, we had said that the Armed Forces Special Services Act has to be reviewed. We cannot afford to let it be perceived by people as something that allows security forces or military to act with impunity. It must be repeated. As I am continuously saying, this is the culprit which has breeded so much animosity between the people of the region and the mainland. It is detrimental to the interests of the nation. That stand of putting the Armed Forces Special Power Act has not really given any results. And uh, in the last many, many years that the Armed Forces Special Power Act has been there, it has only been counterproductive. And uh, there has been more unrest and have had situations where a lot of precious lives have been lost and people have to go, had to go through a lot of pain and suffering. So therefore, we're very clear in our stand that though the issues are there and we need to address those issues, there are many other ways to address those issues. And Armed Forces Special Power Act definitely is not the way to address those issues. AFSPA is a symbol of oppression, is an object of hate. 
it should be repealed. And may I know, sir, and may I know from the government, will the government give permission to sanction those killers? They cannot be called men in uniform. They are killers of innocent people. Will you give them permission to be prosecuted? Will you repeal this AFSA? No country in the world has such barbaric laws. The act in its original form was promulgated by the British in response to the Quit India movement in 1942. After independence, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru decided to retain the act, which was first brought in as an ordinance and then notified as an act in 1958. AFSPA is in force in Assam and Nagaland. It is also in effect in Changlang, Longding and Tirab districts of Arunachal Pradesh. In Manipur, only Imphal Municipal Council area is spared, but the rest of the state is still under AFSPA. Renu Takhilabam has been fighting against AFSPA for nearly a decade and a half now. This Manipuri's husband had driven out on his scooter to a local market to buy a camera reel on 6th April 2007 when he was gunned down by the forces. Renu's son was only 11. Uh, I was so contributing and committing my work to this reform uh, work with related all the cases that we had filed and we are compiling all the and documentation all these 1528 cases. Uh, as my husband also killed, so after that only um, I have also feel the uh, that the pain and suffer that we all victim family are uh, we are gathering together and we have to uh, collective work. It is a collective work uh, to file, um, to get justice. And we want to uh, get justice from the uh, government and we file the cases to the Supreme Court also. ASPA provides for special powers for the armed forces that can be imposed by the centre or the governor of a state on the state or parts of it after it's declared disturbed under Section 3. The Act allows armed forces to open fire, even causing death against any person in contravention of the law or carrying arms and ammunition. It gives them powers to arrest individuals without warrants on the basis of reasonable suspicion and to search premises without warrants. The Act further provides blanket impunity to security personnel involved in such operations.